you can pick up the pace. Good dog, come on. And then stop. Then incorporate another station of hurry up and wait kind of mentality. Just stand here, be patient. How awesome would it be if the dog was on lead and they would just stand still? Not be happy footing around and bouncing around until you have to correct them again. So you've got to work on that. You've got to train that as well. Hey everybody, Ethan here, and we've got an awesome drill for you on one of the most probably ask about obedience behaviors, and that's healing. First of all, we need some cones. Well, we need this, we need this many cones, not that many cones. Whoa, that was a little aggressive. Okay, ha ha, whoo! Let's set one cone here, okay? Then I'm gonna set one cone here, okay? I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna set one cone here. And I bet y'all are getting this figured out already. We're gonna set one more cone right here. That is nowhere near square. Okay. There. What we're doing with this specifically is it's a, it's a very simple concept. Um, go to, I went to Walmart specifically, picked up these cones for this drill and we're going to be working through what I would say is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make when they're trying to work on healing with their dogs. And that is that they spend so much effort, energy, and focus on watching their dog and essentially following what their dog is doing that they're not in fact working on healing with their dog, they're letting their dog take them for a walk. Now, healing is a very important behavior. It's um, awesome from a standpoint of building respect, building trust and understanding from our dogs. And if you can master the healing behavior, you can master the dog. And this is something that I talk about a lot of times, people just saying basic, I have issues with my dogs ping ponging off the walls, they lack respect, they all of these things. Well, we need to put some more emphasis on obedience and healing being one of those important behaviors. Now, for those of you that are big fans of our program, um, you've probably seen this easily before. This can be done in the early stages. This drill that we're talking about can be done when you are still working in the beginning stages there of the easy lead, you've got it up over the dog's muzzle. Or if you're making that transition and you have the slip lead here and you're starting collar conditioning, or if you feel like your dog is pretty well done, just needs minimal correction or handling on occasion, this is a really good drill. So you've got beginner level, medium, and then you can even make this drill more of an advanced level. Now, what we're gonna do to start off with is the beginning stages. Now, I'm not going to use the easy lead with him because he is past that, but I'm gonna show you what this looks like. The four corners specifically give us a, a visual, something to look at and move toward and make that hard decision of where we're going so that we are walking the dog with us as opposed to walking with the dog. We're gonna start this way. When we walk through these corners, we have the ability to make inside turns. That's where the dog is gonna be between us and the cone. We can move around here and we've got another inside turn, heel, good. And we've made our square. Now we can do the same thing in reverse and make outside turns. The inside turns are gonna cause the dog to slow up a little bit as we can use a little bit of physical dominance or our body to turn them around the outside turns are the opposite. They're gonna actually have to speed up to catch up with us. So well, this will look more like this. Come on, bud. We go heel, and then again, I'm between the cone and the dog. This would be our outside turns. Pretty straightforward. Good, heel. But again, I knocked a dang cone over. Um, you've got the ability to know I am walking right here. The dog is coming with me. You see, as I'm walking, I'm not looking down at legend, staring at him constantly, trying to figure out if he's keeping up or if he's doing what he's supposed to, I have an expectation that he's going to come with me. If he lags behind, we're going to make a correction. If he flilly flollies over there, we're going to make that correction. Um, when you are utilizing your leash, whether that be easy lead style or slip lead style or clip lead style, you need to be using 
a pop of the leash, not a long pull. That long pull is going to entice the dog to actually want to fight against you. It's called opposition reflex. So they're pulling, they're fighting against that constant pressure where here we've got a pop that's gonna redirect focus and then they can see what they're doing wrong and you can help make that correction, whether it's encouragement or moving your feet or doing something else. Now, once we get through this basic stuff of just having a direct line, a direction to go, um, we can actually incorporate into an obedience session where we work on a sit stay or a down stay or something as if each cone becomes a station. And you just make this stuff up in your head as you're going. Something to continue to challenge your dog. Or in Legend's case, we put a lot of emphasis on whoa. So we can walk back here and we can try this with him. We can say, whoa, whoa, ah, uh, ah, uh. good. We can leave him there for a minute. Walk away, walk around a little bit, good dog. We can come back in here, pick up our leash again, heel, and we can move to the next cone. Now, if you wanna get real fancy, folks, you can make a diagonal cut. It's all about that point. You don't have to constantly be walking around the outside. It's all about having a specific place to walk, heel, and a way to help keep your dog honest. You're knowing, are they sticking with you? Now, let's say he splits the cone and goes around like that. He's not following me, he's not working with me. And that gives me the knowledge to know he chose to go away from me, which he didn't, he, I had to kind of push him that way, but he, he, he made that decision and that would be something to work on. Then when we come to this next cone, we can go heel and keep him on the inside of it there. Just giving you some visuals, giving you some distinct ability to know, is he working with me? Am I directing him? Let's go up here and try another one. Ledge, sit, good boy. We're gonna work on a sit, stay here a little. Sit, stay, uh-uh, good, walk off, good boy. We come back, love him, good. Calm, we don't need to be getting all eh, or he's gonna jump off of his sit there and he's gonna be bouncing around, feeding off our energy. Good, stay, walk off again. Nice job, buddy. Good. Let's go ahead and make one more loop around, heel. Good. You can pick up the pace. Good dog, come on. And then stop. Then incorporate another station of hurry up and wait kind of mentality. Just stand here, be patient. How many times do you guys go on a walk? I can't even stand still and be patient. How many times do you go on a walk and you have to stop at the stop sign or you gotta, let's say you're even just loading stuff up into your vehicle, you're trying to get out the door, whatever you're doing, how awesome would it be if the dog was on lead and they would just stand still? Not be happy footing around and bouncing around until you have to correct them again. So you've gotta work on that. You've gotta train that as well. Stand still, relax, be calm, be patient while we're waiting here, um, maybe, you know, this happens a lot. We utilize, we try and stay on top of folks here and, and help get back to emails, get back to text messages, e uh, phone calls, whatever it may be. And a dog gets to practice this in training. It's, hey, how's it going? You know, and I'm distracted then, but they've got to be able to maintain composure and stand still. So we had a sit stay, we had a stand stay. We've had a, a stand and wait, basically, just be patient. And Legend's doing a really good job of all of this. Folks, this would be the... Uh, four corner cone drill. I don't even have a real name for it, but it's something that you can utilize that's very simple, whether you go pick up some cones or use anything that you've got around the house. Um, you could even incorporate these things as being distractions themselves, something to work away from. Even if you get advanced, you know, all of our dogs like food, you can throw a bowl of food there that you work past or around, or one of their special toys as one of the corner markers. Gives you the visual, gives them the distraction. Obviously, that's a more advanced thing, folks. Start with something simple to begin with, but make sure and have fun. Reach out to us if you've got questions. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Legend, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.